there's a story I want to talk about that nobody's talking about. And I hesitate to bring it up because I don't want to start a conspiracy theory. And that's not, I'm not being conspiratorial about it, but it does t- say something. There's a woman who's gone missing in LA. She's been missing weeks. I got a woman named Heidi Plunk, 39. Uh, she's a mother. She uh, was watching the, her son's football game or she wandered off and they found her dog and nobody knows where she is. And it doesn't sound very good. Now, she works uh, as a controller and executive assistant for an investment advisory company called Camden Capital Partners, LLC. And it's very mysterious and they don't know what happened to her. It doesn't sound good, right? But the SEC in 2019 charged the company that she works with, uh, Camden Capital, and charged the executive, Jason Sugarman, and his business partner, partner Jason Galanis, with securities fraud, right? The pair had developed a scheme to steal $43 million from its clients that they purported to invest in Native American tribal ma- bonds. And I'm looking at those names. Do you remember those names, right? Those are names that Hunter, those are people Hunter Biden associated with. He had that thing with the Russian billionaire and he was laundering, uh, he was charged allegedly laundering money. Uh, And John Galanis, who has a history of white collar fraud convictions, uh, alleged that his son, Jason, who was the guy we're talking about, worked with Biden and their partner, Devin Archer, uh, to help her launder money, right? And these are all the same people who are involved in this story of this missing woman that nobody's paying any attention to, uh, who's obviously, you know, somehow this corruption has I, I made her run or made her somebody attack her. We don't know what it is yet. Uh, and, it, and it's all these same people that Hunter Biden was associating with. In ver- in, and the press covered it up, right? These are all the people. Remember, he was associating with these people. He's going to get 10% for the big guy. That was the China deal he had going on. Now, look, I'm not saying that Hunter is involved in the misappearance the disappearance of this woman. And I'm certainly not saying that Joe Biden had this woman killed to protect Hunter, but that's obvious. No, <laughs> that's, I'm joking there. It's not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is what an ugly bunch of people for our president and his family to be, uh, you know, immersed with. How, how corrupt are these people? These are, you know, how corrupt are these people that they were hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein, that they were flying on the Lolita Express? How filthy are they, you know? And, I, and I, by the way, I'm not uh, exempting Republicans, but I, it is, it does seem thick and fast on the ground with these, with Democrats. And it's the Democrats who are always yelling at us about, oh, Donald Trump, you voted for Donald Trump. And I keep saying he ran against a career criminal, you know? And these people are so immersed in this dirty world and the press in defending them becomes part of them. The press has become so corrupt. You know, Gerard Baker, a columnist I really like at the Wall Street Journal, he wrote this column about the mainstream media and things they've said. Here are some things they've said. Kyle Rittenhouse is a domestic terrorist. Brett Kavanaugh is a rapist. Donald Trump won in 2016 only because he colluded with the Kremlin. Nick Sandman, the boy from Covington Catholic High School on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, was an entitled white bigot. Mr. Trump said the neo-Nazis at Charlottesville were good people. These are all lies. Last year's riots were mostly peaceful. Unarmed black men are routinely shot in huge numbers by police officers. The discovery of Hunter Biden's laptop was a Russian plot. And he says the worst thing about it is not the lies is that they want to stop everybody else from speaking in the name of misinformation. They want to protect their lies by silencing everybody else. That is part of the corruption that you see. And I mean, now we see uh, John Durham. It doesn't look to me like John Durham is going to come up with some big conspiracy where he shows the FBI was out to get Donald Trump. But he is showing that this Steele dossier that the press ran with for three years that accused Donald Trump of all kinds of things, is you know, he he's indicted the guy who's supposed to be the main source who was in fact a Russian guy, maybe Russian intelligence. So it was Hillary. It was Hillary who was uh, colluding with the Russians, not Trump all this time. The corruption is so deep. It is so deep and it has to be, it has got to be because the philosophy doesn't make sense. And that's why I don't like it when we on the right react, when we react to them. I don't care about them. I see what's happened to them. I see where they've gone. I know who leads them. I know what road they're on. I know where that dark road goes, right? I don't want us to just say, well, they say black, so we say white. They say up, so we say down. That's not what I want. What I want for is for us to decide where we have to go as conservatives and what the future of conservatism should be. Hey, please like us and subscribe to our channel. We will give you more great content just like this.